This is the Paul Leslie Reviews. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It was not long ago that I heard the news that Jerry Lee Lewis has passed away. Very, very sad news. It was just a few days ago, October 25th, that I published an album review, uh, an essay about Jerry Lee Lewis's album, Mean Old Man. And life got in the way, I'm sorry to say, and I was not able to record the spoken word version that you're about to hear. So I was talking to my friend Jeff Pike, who actually opened for Jerry Lee Lewis with his band at one point. And uh, I was texting with him, and he said, you should read the essay now. And he said something that I thought, well, that's really the right way to put it. He said, today is really the day the music died. So I'm going to read the essay, and Jeff said I should read it as I wrote it. I, uh, a lot of people, some of the people who know me know that Jerry Lee Lewis was a big deal to me. Jerry Lee and Fats Domino. So, I'm going to read the essay now. The induction of Jerry Lee Lewis into the Country Music Hall of Fame renewed my interest in his 40th studio album, Mean Old Man, released on Verb Records in 2010. The album featured many collaborations with noteworthy musicians. The title track, Mean Old Man, was written by Chris Christopherson. Jerry Lee Lewis was officially inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame on October 16, 2022, along with Joe Galante and the late Keith Whitley. Better late than never, I suppose. Unfortunately, an illness kept him from attending the ceremony, but Chris Christopherson was able to present Jerry Lee with the award later. There have been but a few people in American music that have accomplished what he has. If you're considering the legend still with us, he's in a class alone. To borrow the title of the album immediately preceding this one, he's the last man standing. Jerry Lee Lewis is in a select group that effortlessly fits into the rock and country worlds. It's nothing manufactured. It's just how he is. Credited as a pioneer of rock and roll, his devoted fans also know that he can embody a country song like nobody's business. Yet he never gave up on rock either. His former drummer, Tarp Torrent, said this of him. He was a rock star 24-7. You can't just put it on and take it off. You got to live it, eat it, sleep it, dream it, walk it, and talk it. And he did. You get the idea that the star role is something Jerry never shed. Even to this day, it wasn't long ago, September 29th to be exact, that Jerry Lee celebrated his 87th birthday. Nevertheless, he has a gospel album coming out soon. Few have that kind of longevity. I've given a very close examination of Jerry Lee's catalog. I love it. That's the most accurate way to put it. Going back to the 50s, Lewis has kept all his records to a very high standard, but his most recent records are overlooked. I'd like to take a close look at Mean Old Man in particular. Produced by the late Steve Bing and drummer Jim Keltner, Mean Old Man came out in 2010 on Verve Records. The cover shows the killer stepping out of an old car flanked by a couple of damsels. Although I enjoyed the album upon first listen, my appreciation for Mean Old Man has only grown through the years. Recommendation. If you're going to listen to Mean Old Man, go with the deluxe edition. It's got some of the best tracks missing from the standard version. You're going to hear 18 tracks almost entirely featuring Jerry Lee Lewis, joined by icons and stars ranging from Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson to Sheryl Crow and John Fogarty. There's a lot of country classics on Mean Old Man. Lewis has been familiar with a good number of these songs, like You Can Have Her and Release Me for decades. Jerry Lee Lewis has tended to revisit material through the years, 
interpreting the same song in different ways. I was able to interview the legendary studio drummer Jim Keltner, who co-produced the Mean Old Man album. Keltner remarked, All the material he knew well enough, you know, to, that he was at, at very much at home with. In listening to the songs, you'll notice how relaxed Jerry Lee Lewis seemed. Keltner went on to recall, But the actual tracking with Jerry Lee was, uh, went a lot smoother than I expected. The album was recorded across 2008 to early 2010. Sharing his opinion on the album, Keltner commented, I'm, I'm proud of my work on those records. I'm, I'm proud of the way Jerry sang and played. Here are some of the tracks on Mean Old Man that I've come to really love. On Rocking My Life Away, he's joined by Kid Rock with Slash on guitar. This is a Mac Vickery song, and not Jerry's first attempt at the song. He did it with a different tempo back in 1979. This version has a live feel to it, with Kid Rock proclaiming his singing duet partner as the real deal. Hold You In My Heart is an exemplar track on the album. Jerry's playing and singing is great, but I think Shelby Lynn could have been a little more prominent, like she was on the album that followed this one. They sing so well together. Swinging Doors is an old Merle Haggard song. Merle Haggard and Jerry Lee Lewis were well-suited duet partners. It makes me so glad they made this record, because it preserved duets like this. The same could be said of the pairing of Jerry and Willie Nelson on Whiskey River. I enjoyed Whiskey River so much that I could imagine an entire collaborative album of Jerry Lee Lewis and Willie Nelson. Middle Age Crazy was written by the great Sonny Throckmorton. The song has great lyrics, and Jerry was still middle-aged the first time he recorded it back in 1977 on his Country Memories record. On this version... He's joined by Tim McGraw. I love the tune, but it feels like a bit of a duet mismatch. He sings the classic song, Please Release Me, with Gillian Welch. This old song has been done by so many great singers, from Elvis Presley to Engelbert Humperdinck, and quite a few country singers, ranging from Ray Price and Dolly Parton to Johnny Paycheck. The song and Jerry Lee Lewis go way back. Jerry Lee has been known to rush his performances, something he is aware of. This is his third time recording it, and I think the best interpretation, each version getting a slightly different tempo. Welch joins Jerry Lee Lewis on I Really Don't Want to Know, a song many associate with Les Paul and Mary Ford. Although the recording is high fidelity, it's dripping with sentimentality. One thing is certain from this album. Jerry's natural ability at performing gospel music. He introduces the song Railroad to Heaven as one he used to do when he was a kid at a small Assembly of God church in Faraday, Louisiana. With backup vocals from Solomon Burke, Jerry remarked, It was good then and it's good now. His familiarity with the song is evident. The group effort of Will the Circle Be Unbroken? has even more meaning now that Jerry Lee Lewis is an inductee of the Country Music Hall of Fame. He's joined by Mavis Staples, Robbie Robertson, and Nils Lofgren. If you like Jerry Lee Lewis's interpretations of gospel music, you're in luck. There's a solo gospel record coming out soon. It's been much anticipated. The absolute gem on the record is the last track, Miss the Mississippi and You. It's also the most pared down. Jerry Lee Lewis alone, just piano and vocals. It's a song most associated with Jimmy Rogers, who recorded it back in 1932, 90 years ago. It's not a very well-known song, but I think Jerry Lee has done it better than anybody, all by his lonesome. He's made his home at the Lewis Ranch in Nesbitt, Mississippi for more than 40 years. Jerry's performance of this song is a heartfelt tribute to his longtime Magnolia State abode. Jerry Lee Lewis' solo is an underappreciated listening experience, and I'm thrilled there will be more of it. Jerry Lee's contemporaries left the world exceptional material. With Fats Domino, Little Richard, and Chuck Berry no longer with us, 
Jerry Lee remains the last man standing. He's the only survivor of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's inaugural 1986 class. Although there is a tendency to pay attention to all of the records from the 50s and 60s, it's certainly a mistake to overlook these star-studded later albums from Jerry Lee Lewis. Producer Jim Keltner told me about how these 21st century records of Jerry Lee Lewis will be perceived in years to come. He said, Over time, people will go, when, when, as time goes on, people will say, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, okay, uh, well, uh, oh yeah, there, was, there he was when he was a very, very young man. What did he do later on in life? And they'll listen to those records, and I think they'll really love them. Give me an old man a close listen. There's plenty of brilliance and nothing artificial. Despite all of Jerry Lee Lewis's swagger and image, his music is at the forefront. Jerry Lee put it plainly, I want him to remember me simply for my music.